So I was talking about Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19, which St. Paul writes, as I said, to the Ephesians. And he is talking to them and telling them about how, you know, we as human beings are no longer alien, but we all belong. And we belong because we all draw from the fatherhood of Jesus Christ. Now, I chose this as the theme of my talk today to talk about St. Joseph, because St. Joseph is the patron, as we heard yesterday and we'll continue to hear, is the patron for fathers. St. Joseph is the patron also for the church. But St. Joseph is the patron for the family as well. It is this family where we all belong because we are all children of God. And that's where St. Joseph has become patron. In this, which, which sense therefore has St. Joseph become patron? Um, I would like us to read uh, shortly from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter one and verse 20. And it reads, while he was pondering over this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She has conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and, and the text goes on. So the first thing we notice about this text is the fact that St. Joseph was pondering on how he could deal with this new situation, this new reality in which he has found himself. But God said to him, look, stay where you are. Stay in your place. Because everything that is happening, you are going to find your grace when you stay in your place. So Joseph has become patron of the family because he stayed in the family even when it was difficult. He stayed in his place even when it was painful. You can imagine how it would have been for a man. Think of it, not just him as a saint, but him as a man. How humiliating it might have been to know that your wife is pregnant and you are not responsible. How degrading it must have been to know that the whole village would be talking about how unfaithful your wife is to, towards you. Like you are not a man at all. These are the challenges that St. Joseph probably went through as he was pondering over everything that he had been through. But through pondering over everything that had gone through, the word of the Lord came to him and stayed to him, stay right there. And I think this is the message of Advent. This is the message that God says to each one of us in the time of Advent, that we should stay right where we are. Because the coming of God comes to us in the place where we are. The coming of God, God who loves us, God who encounters us, is in the concrete place of our existence, just right where I am now. This is exactly where God has blessed me. This is the place the present and active place where God wants me to be. Just as it was the present and active place for St. Joseph to be in the family with Mary, with all those circumstances. Now, the space where we are, the place where we are, could be a physical place, okay? I am not in Lusaka, in Zambia, St. Dominic's Major Seminary. 
I am now here in Ireland. Physically, this is where I am. It could be bodily, okay? Um, I am no longer as agile and, you know, as <laughs> athletic as I used to be 10 years ago because I am now older and I need to accept the reality that I can no longer run seven kilometers. I can probably walk 30, you know, 30 centimeters. So that is the place where I am. It could be physical. It could be bodily. It could be relational. It could be, well, this is the person that I'm living with here now. This is the wife that I have. This is the husband that I have. These are my brothers in the community. These are my workmates at work. These are the kind of thing. That is my space. It could also be, well, this is how I communicate with God. I, this is how I send my rosary. This is how I send my divine mercy. This is how I pray my morning prayer. It could also be psychological. You know, what is going on in my mind, with the COVID situation and everything. That could be my psychological place. Perhaps it could also be a historical reality. The things that I've gone through that have shaped the person that I am. This is my history. This is where I've been. So this is what we mean by space. Physical, bodily, relational, spiritual, psychological, or perhaps historical. Just like for St. Joseph, physically, here he was in this place, in this relationship with Mary. Physically, here he is in Nazareth. Spiritually, here he is dry and probably becoming a dreamer because he doesn't know what has happened. Psychologically, all the words of the neighbors and everyone will be saying and talking about Mary. Historically, he's the son of heaven. And he doesn't understand as the son of heaven is going to happen. But like St. Joseph, it is right here in my place, in my space, this is where I am called and loved. Because the love of God provides for me just exactly where God has blessed me. Just like for St. Joseph. The love of God blessed him right there. And the love of God is going to be with him right in his place. Now, what then should I do in this love, you know, in this space that God has blessed me? The first thing is we need to realize that it is the Holy Spirit who has helped us to be in this place. And the Holy Spirit is always personalizing each and every of our salvation. My salvation is personalized to me according to the space where I am. Salvation and the salvific act of God comes to meet me right in my body. Whether I am growing old, whether I'm still young, whether I'm becoming tired, in my relationships, the people that he has blessed with me, whether they are an appreciative of the good that I do, that these people are so unfair to me, whether these people do not even know God or have no intentions of knowing God, this is where God is going to specifically tailor my own salvation. So therefore, I need to absolutely, as one saint would say, absolutely be rooted in the reality of my life. I need to absolutely be rooted in the reality of my life. When I am rooted in that reality of my life, in that physical, bodily, relational, spiritual, psychological, and historical place, there where I am, 
God's grace begins to open and to reach me and to be available to me, just as it was for St. Joseph. You know, St. Pro- uh, not Saint Pope Francis has recently published a book called Let Us Dream the Path to a Better Future. And I would advise you to read this book. It's a beautiful book. In it, Pope Francis uh, reflects on the COVID situation and cleverly as, as usual and as inspired as Pope Francis is, he uses COVID as a metaphor. For Pope Francis, we experience, we have the COVID experience. And this COVID experience for him is those moments in our lives when we are forced to stop, you know, those moments that where we are forced to stop and these moments reveal what change need to take place. They reveal the inner lack of freedom they review, according to Pope Francis, the idols that we have been serving. These COVID moments reveal the ideologies that we have been turning to or trying to turn to. And in the process, once these have been revealed, the whole truth about ourselves and relationship with God is revealed. So perhaps the Pope asks us, in the space where you are, which is your COVID moment? The Pope talks about three of his COVID moments, which were spaces that were difficult, but he went through it and the result of that was grace. One of them that he refers to is a place called Kodba, and he says, this place taught him to deep to go deep within himself and realize the grace of God that works in us. And perhaps if we open this and relate this with St. Joseph, realize that this is exactly what was going on in the life of St. Joseph. It was a difficult, dark moment, but God said to St. Joseph, stay where you are. Because the grace of God comes to us right in the darkness of our places. When we embrace our own darkness, when we embrace this space, God begins to work within us. Therefore, as Pope Francis would say, there should be this process of displacement where we begin to look at ourselves in the places where we are. We begin to find healing and we create a makeover of who we are. Psychologically, spiritually, relationally, and even about our own self-identity because we are in this space. Now, sometimes the space may be difficult and we may want to fight it. The word of the Lord to St. Joseph was, do not fight this space. Do not fight this difficulty. Stay where you are because I will meet you right there. So in short, instead of fighting sometimes the space where we are, we need to begin to accept. And how do we learn to accept the space where we are? When you realize that you are no longer as active as you were, you're probably turning towards your late 70s, towards your 80s or 90s, because of a physical debilitation that has come to you because of, you know, your sickness. Often the challenge is there are many temptations that come when our spaces are no longer as, you know, as we think they should be. And we are tempted 
to anger. We may be tempted to resentment. We may be tempted to a sense of failure. We may probably be tempted to impurity because we have lost that inner drive, the inner energy, the inner vitality. But then our response, even to these temptations that come because our space is in threat must be that of patience, must be that of, of peace. Why? Because this is the time of a real purification. Because this is the time when we learn to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. If St. Joseph had not stayed in the place where he was, he probably would have found it difficult to forgive himself, to forgive others, and to accept. Not that I'm saying St. Joseph had to forgive, but I'm just making an, an allusion to that. We need the patience. We need the peace. These are gifts that helps us to understand the importance of what we are going through. It could be in this COVID situation, we have been blessed in a family where it is very difficult or it has been very painful or harsh. But then these moments, no matter how they are, no matter how difficult they are, with patience and peace. It is like what the Gospel of John chapter 15 says, it is the pruning that is taking place in us, you know, and pruning is, 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 is painful. It's the harshness of pruning that is going on. So we must allow that displacement to take place in us. If we fight it, we are going to come out worse. If we accept it, if we stop resisting, if we stop pushing, if we stop fighting, we give God a chance to work in us. We give God the chance to let and allow his grace to be with us. As some you know, writers would say, the grace in darkness the grace in darkness that comes to us. But we need to ask for that grace, the peace, the trust, the patience that we need to go through these difficult moments. God knows what is going on because it is God who has placed us in the place where we are. It is God who has put you in the space where you are. And if you are put in that space by God, it is only God who is going to help you. It is only the presence of God himself. You know, there's a beautiful passage I love, very beautiful. It's from Exodus, Exodus chapter 33 and verse 22. And it reads, then Yahweh said, you cannot see my face because you cannot see me and live. And he added, he added, see this place near me. You shall stand on the rock. And when my glory passes, I will put you in a hollow of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed through. So Moses asks God, I want to see you. Okay, this is how intimate the relationship was between Moses and God. Moses asks God, I want to see you. But God responds and says, no, look, you cannot see me and live. No one can ever see God and live. But because you're so special, I will place a rock near me and you will stand on that rock. And once you stand on the rock near me, then you will be able to see me. 
Of course, we all know who the rock is. Jesus is the rock. Once we step on the rock of Jesus, he who is the son of the father, we become adopted daughters and sons of the father and we can see. So staying in the place where we are is asking for the grace to stand by the rock near the Lord. And once we stand by the rock near God, then we'll be able to see God. This is exactly what Joseph did. Joseph stood by the rock of the word. You know, Marie, just before me in, in her testimony, was talking about the grace of Joseph listening because he listened and he obeyed. So listening and obedience transformed, changed his life. In this sense, for us and for everyone of us, we too can be transformed when we stand on the rock near God. The physical, bodily, relational, spiritual, psychological, and historical realities become transformed because of God. And we know that that rock is Jesus Christ. So coming back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, St. Paul says, you are no longer aliens, but fellow citizens. We have formed the family of God. And we all know that this family of God, we have God who is father, Jesus as our brother. We also have Mary as our mother. And we have Saint Joseph as our protector and patron saint. In this family, this is where we find all the virtues as Ecclesia in Africa says, the virtues of caring, the virtues of justice, the virtues of peace, the virtues of understanding. But in order for all of these things to be in place, there has to be a space where we are standing. Now, St. Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, um, I'll just read that quickly. I think I probably may be running out of time, but I'll read it very quickly. He went on to the cross and burdened. Uh, he went to the cross burdened with our sins so that we might die to sin and live an upright life. For by his wounds, you have been healed. By the wounds of Jesus, we have been healed. Our brother brought salvation to each one of us. We are restored to God by the pain that he feels. God feels the pain. And the pain of God is love. So if we think there is a lot of pain, brokenness, there's a lot of woundedness in our space, Remember that God himself underwent that pain. God himself underwent that brokenness. But that pain was love. God's pain is God's love. And by his pain, we are healed. Our pain in our space can be love. Once we do not fight that pain, once we embrace it with God, once we do not resist it, that pain can become salvific. St. Joseph shows us this way. In his quiet response to the will of God, he shows us that we can transform all our spaces into moments of God's grace. As a priest working in the seminary for a few years, I realized how 
as a priest, I need St. Joseph. And now every seminarian and priest needs St. Joseph. Because like St. Joseph, we all have heard the word, which we probably think is totally against our own wishes and desires. Sometimes this pushes us away from what we want. But with St. Joseph, in listening and obedience, I have learned that there's a lot of grace that takes place when we stay in the place. When we stay where the grace of God has access to each one of us, when we stay in the place of blessing, the place of grace. That place of grace is where God has chosen me to be here and now. May God bless you. I'm so sorry once more for the internet difficulties. Uh, next time, I hope to work on this. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Oh, bless you.